So hi everyone uh, and uh, welcome to this particular video which will go through uh, our uh, lesson on the properties of the production function basically. So the properties of the production function is the second part of this, our lecture on the solo growth model. So if you recall in the last video we defined the aggregate production function as yt is equal to at, fkt, and t. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to formalize what sort of properties that production function needs to adhere to. So there are five properties, two, three, four, and five. The first one is that the marginal products, marginal products are positive. Okay. And this just means that the, uh, fk is greater than zero and fl is greater than zero. We're going to define what those are. It just basically means that if I add more labor or more capital um, in the production process, that will increase output strictly, right? So that's why that derivative, these are derivatives, will be positive, right? The next one is that uh, there is diminishing marginal product, okay? marginal product, uh, and this just means that FKK is less than zero, FLL is less than zero, okay? Basically, this is sort of like if you took intermediate micro theory, it's the same thing with utility. When I increase um, capital that uh, the first time, that first time increase will be bigger than the second time I increase capital. So as I move from one, one unit of capital to two units of capital, that increase will be huge. But the increase from, say, I move from two units of capital to three units of capital is still going to be positive, but it's not going to be as big as that increase from one to two. And the same goes for labor. Okay. So number three is complementarity. Complementarity. So we have that F K N is equal to F N K is greater than zero, right? And this just means that if I have more capital, the marginal product of labor is higher and vice versa. If I have more labor, then the marginal product of uh, capital uh, of labor, if I have more uh, labor, then the marginal product of capital is higher, okay? Number four is constant returns to scale. Returns to scale. Uh, this one, probably a new concept, just means that if I scale the amount of labor and capital, right, by some factor, gamma greater than zero, okay? So say I double labor and I double capital. So both of them change by the same amount. That will strictly, okay, that will strictly double output as well. So it's as if it's the same as you multiplying the per, the output by that scale, which is this gamma term here. So if I change labor and I change capital by the same amount, then the output in total will also change by that same amount. Okay, that's what we refer to as constant returns to scale. And the last one is no free lunch. Free lunch right and this just means that if i don't have labor or if i don't have capital in the production process then i have no output just means that that i need both i cannot live with just one of them i cannot just have a lot of labor and no capital that will not make uh, that won't allow the firm to produce anything basically okay so let's uh Let's go with an example. Example. Say we have this production function, a Cobb-Douglas production function. Production function. And uh, this production function takes this particular form, say yt is equal to kt raised to alpha and t raised to 1 minus alpha, wherein alpha is between 0 and 1 between zero and one, okay? So we wanna verify the property. So the first thing we verify is number one, okay? So we compute for FK and FN. FK is just the derivative of the production function with respect to capital, 
ones. So that's going to be alpha kt, alpha minus one. So follow the product rule. And then just copy the nt because that's not what we're deriving with respect to. And notice here, alpha is a positive number. Alpha minus one is a negative number, but it's an exponent. So that just goes down. And, uh, and then you have one minus alpha. Alpha is between zero and one. So that must be a positive number. So clearly, this is greater than zero, right? Next, we have Fn. That's the derivative of kt and t with respect to nt. So we get one minus alpha, kt alpha, nt, one minus alpha minus one. So uh, same chain rule. And uh, what we get is minus alpha. And that's also greater than zero. Why? Because that's a negative number, but that's an exponent, so it goes down. And then one minus alpha, alpha is between zero and one. So that's a positive scale. Right? So that proves the two properties, right? So two, okay. So the second one is um, diminishing marginal product. So say FKK, that's equal to the second derivative of the production function with respect to capital, right? And uh, basically, we derive that function again. So that's the exponent of kt is alpha minus 1. So we have alpha minus 1 times the alpha that's there, right? That same alpha times, so there's still this alpha here, times kt raised to alpha minus 1 minus 1. So that's alpha minus 2 and t1 minus alpha. If I simplify this, so distribute the alpha, I get alpha squared minus alpha kt alpha minus 2 and t1 minus alpha. Now, alpha squared, okay, if alpha is between 0 and 1, okay, so it's a decimal, some decimal, then I, if I square that, it's going to be a, an even smaller number than what it once was, right? So think about if alpha was 1 half, so that's in between 0 and 1. If I square 1 half, it's 1 fourth. It's a smaller number. So this thing here is strictly negative. So that's a negative scale. And clearly, this entire thing must be negative because these two things are positive. The exponent of this one might be negative, but you just put it down. Next is FNN. Again, that's the second derivative of the production function with respect to NT. And that's just equal to minus alpha times 1 minus alpha, KT alpha, and T minus alpha minus 1. And uh, if I simplify that, that's going to be negative alpha plus alpha squared, kt alpha, and t negative alpha minus 1. But again, this alpha squared is not enough to offset this negative alpha. So this must be negative again. Okay. Next, okay, we have number 3, okay, which is the complementarity property. So all we need to do is solve for fkn. And by Young's theorem, this is the same as f and k. So uh, that's f, k, k, t, n, t. Derive it with respect to k, t, then derive it with respect to n, t. Okay. And uh, this one will be equal to, okay, so uh, let's do uh, this first one. Derive the first one with respect to, instead of, uh, instead of deriving this one with respect to k, t again, Let's derive it now with respect to nt. So we get alpha times 1 minus alpha kt alpha minus 1 nt. 1 minus alpha minus 1 is negative alpha. And uh, if we distribute, so we get alpha minus alpha squared kt alpha minus 1 nt minus alpha. So alpha is bigger than alpha squared. So this must be positive. So that's the complementarity property. Okay. Next is constant returns to scale. Okay, so say I scale both capital and labor by this factor gamma. So if you recall, our production function is fkt and t is equal to kt alpha and t1 minus alpha. So I'm just going to scale by, by gamma. So it's going to be gamma kt alpha gamma nt 1 minus alpha. So this will be gamma raised to alpha, kt alpha, gamma raised to 1 minus alpha, and t 1 minus alpha. Then 
from here, it's all multiplication. So I can combine these two. So it's gamma raised to alpha plus one minus alpha, kT alpha and T one minus alpha, right? But this is just our production function. Whoops. This is just our production function. So that's F, K, T, and T. And this simplifies to gamma raised to one, right? Which is exactly the property of constant returns to scale, right? And the last one is straightforward, no free lunch. If I have, say, no labor, so zero, it's going to be K, T raised to alpha, and T is zero, one minus alpha. The operation between is multiplication, that's zero. And the same thing is true if I have no capital. So I have zero raised to alpha and T raised to one minus alpha, and that's also zero. So those are the properties of the production function. We need to understand these properties to be able to underpin the firm's problem, which is the next video of our series. So thank you very much for your attention, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.